Hello and welcome to the Thursday afternoon Ask FFT q and I'm Chris Towers here with Tara Roberts and Frank Stampful, and we're going to be answering your week 11 fantasy football questions for, let's say, the next hour-ish. You know, maybe we go an hour five, maybe we go 57 minutes. It really depends on how long Frank wants to grace us with his presence. You know, he shows up like 20 seconds before we start. He's He strolls in. He's big time in us. Actually, Adam Azer's big time in us. He didn't show up today. Hope everything's okay with Azer, but we'll be here uh, holding things down for the next hour. I will be Handling the questions, Frank and Tara will be answering them for the most part. I'll, I'll throw in a, the occasional opinion, but yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. And I, I guess we'll kick it off with a, a little update of some of the news that we've had on Thursday afternoon. Matthew Stafford expected to be cleared for week 11 from the concussion protocol. Obviously, he's going to be playing without Cooper Cup. Is there anything in this Rams offense, Tara, that that you have any interest in for week 11 and beyond? I mean, we're so we're in dire need of tight ends across the league. <laughs> yeah. So I'm now 100% okay with Tyler Higby. So yeah, very interested in Tyler Higby. But I need to see how this shapes out because um, I don't know if I don't know if Van Jefferson can fully translate to that Cooper Cup role. So I want to kind of see how that plays out in terms of Van Jefferson and Allen Robinson before I kind of make a dive into saying 100% starting these guys. Frank, any uh, any thoughts on the Rams offense? Yeah, I agree completely with Tyler Higby. He's ranked inside my top 10 tight ends this week. I think if you're desperate, obviously we have some good teams on a buy, some good wide receivers on a buy. I have a deeper league where I'm starting Allen Robinson because I frankly just don't have a choice. There's three wide receivers and two flexes in that league. So I think if you're desperate, you can roll with an Allen Robinson. Henderson, a low end flex. But honestly, I, you know, I try to get away from Stafford. I picked up Mariota in one league. It's a one QB league. So getting away from Stafford, you know, trying to get away from it. But I think Higby uh, for sure in your lineup and then Allen Robinson, if you're desperate. Yeah, I did just update my QB rankings. Matthew Stafford is one spot below Marcus Mariota. So I'm with you on that one. He's QB 22 in a, in a pretty bad week for the position. So that tells you where my expectations are. Uh, one good bit of news that we got on Thursday, Kyler Murray did participate in Thursday's practice, likely going to be limited, but seems like there's a chance he could play. Problem is that's a Monday night game, so you may not have the flexibility to keep him in your lineup in case he is ruled out. Although Colt McCoy was okay enough last week that I would probably rank him like, God, 17th at quarterback this week, just how <laughs> bad things are. And, you know, the fact that he's got a pretty good receiving core, assuming DeAndre Hopkins is okay. He did miss practice on Thursday. I'm assuming that's just a rest thing, but I haven't seen anything on that. Uh, Marquise Brown did some individual drills. He could return this week. Corey Davis did not practice Thursday. Ezekiel Elliott was limited. Marquez Valdez-Scantling practiced on Thursday. Juju Smith-Schuster and Nicole Hardman were out. And Randall Cobb's expected to play Thursday night. Played about 40% of the snaps most weeks before his in ankle injury. I don't think there's any interest in Randall Cobb, but does that do anything to dampen our enthusiasm for Christian Watson? No, not really. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of, he's a flex for me. I mean, don't go thinking that you've all of a sudden got a wide receiver one, but uh, while Randall Cobb can come in and make a little bit of an impact, nothing so aggressive that I'm worried about um, Alan Lazard or Christian Watson. Yeah, I have Christian Watson just inside my top 30 wide receivers. I've heard other people make the comp this week that he's like a less proven Gabe Davis. I think that's probably fair. Christian Watson, yeah. you know, freak athlete. I know a lot of people liked him coming out of college, but for now kind of seems like that boomer bust wide receiver three. Uh, but it, it seems like he's been the missing piece that this Packers passing attack needs right now. And he had a ton of air yards last week. So overall, I'm pretty excited about both uh, Christian Watson as a wide receiver three and Alan Lazard as a wide receiver two tonight. All right. Yeah. The, uh, the Titans have been especially vulnerable to the deep ball in uh in the passing game this season i think they have the third most fantasy points allowed to opposing wide receivers so far this season so they're very beat up they've been better of late on defense but this still does seem like a pretty good matchup and aaron Rodgers is a borderline top 12 qb for me this week uh all right make sure if you're watching that you hit the like button make sure you subscribe to fantasy football today on youtube so we can you know, keep doing these streams and we'll be here on Sunday morning at 1130. I'll be here tonight after Thursday night football answering some questions. So make sure you tune in, make sure you hit like, make sure you subscribe and let's get to the questions. All right. I'm going through the, uh, 
the chat and looks like there's some commiserating about uh, about some lost playoff hopes with the Cooper Cup injury. I'm right there with you. I have one team that first place team just lost Cooper Cup and Dallas Goddard. Not feeling great about my chances. So that's not great. Let's see. Uh, mm-hmm. I have Devontae Adams, Rondale Moore, Jerry Judy, and George Pickens. Running backs are Miles Sanders, DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams, Brian Robinson, Gus Edwards, and Devin Singletary. Should he trade Devontae Adams for Travis Etienne? I would I, not. Go ahead. I, think it, I was going to say, I think it's probably a fair deal, but I don't know that you have enough top-tier wide receiver talent to trade a Devontae, Devontae Adams away. You could use an RB1, so I, I see why you're going for it, but I think I would just stick with Adams. What do you think, Sarah? Yeah, it's it's a fair trade, but I would not do it. I mean, I don't want to be left with Rondell Moore and, you know, which who I love. But unfortunately, Marquise Brown coming back could hurt a little bit. I still think he's a very startable option, has wide receiver two upside, but I just kind of think it kind of limits you in your ability. So you're looking at three guys right there that probably can't get you a wide receiver one performance. So I would stick it out with what you have because things would get a little bit risky in your receiving core. Yep, I I actually have Rondell Moore as a top 12 wide receiver this week, but that's partially a function of no Tyreek Hill, no Jalen Waddle, no Seattle Seahawks wide receivers, no Christian Kirk. So he probably wouldn't be top 12 in a normal week, but I do like him quite a bit. Uh, Half PPR, start two. Darnell Mooney, Kadarius Toney, Josh Palmer, DJ Moore, or Ezekiel Elliott? Mm. I'm going to guess we're going to get a lot of Kadarius Tony questions <laughs> this week coming yes. off of a 57 yard and a touchdown performance and the chiefs very shorthanded at wide receiver. Yeah, as we should, I was going to say just like a preamble to everything ranking wide receivers this week, <laughs> wild, wild west. I mean, yes. whatever you want to do. I've looked at a few other people's rankings, see what other people are doing. I, I like to do that every week and just kind of, give myself a reality check um, and everyone's all over the place. So I think uh, I am probably no different at this point. Uh, Let's see. I think there's so much injury related items in here. Like we don't know about Keenan Allen. We don't know about Mike Williams. We don't know if Zeke is going to play. I have Darnell Mooney ranked like irrationally high. He's inside my top 20 wide receivers this week. So I like it. I think I would go with Mooney and (sighs) knowing what we know right now, probably Tony, like if Zeke plays, it's probably Zeke and Mooney. But if Zeke doesn't, Mooney and Tony. You know what part of the problem is? Is that that Chiefs Chargers game, which a lot of rest, a lot rests on here mm-hmm. for right. for this specific question. Yeah. That's a Sunday night game, so we may not have the answers for that until you have to set most of the rest of your lineup. Although, luckily, you know, like if Allen and Mike Williams are out, I think Josh Palmer's the top guy here. Yeah. I think he's probably yeah. a top fifteen wide receiver this week. So that that could be a situation where. It comes down to Sunday night and you just leave a spot for Tony or Palmer. And if Williams and and Allen are out, or even if one of them's out, I think you go with Palmer. If not, Tony's got plenty of upside. It does seem like Juju Smith-Schuster's not going to play. He's he's had four concussions in the NFL the last time he had one, he missed a game. So I would think he's probably going to be out this week. Um, So yeah, that's that's where I'm going with that. Tara, do you have any, uh, any other thoughts? Yeah, it's narrowed down to the first three just because I hate the fact that Baker Mayfield, unfortunately, is back for DJ Moore. And then I'm super uncomfortable with Zeke um, this week in that matchup I'm not a fan of. And so it leans towards a. But the good thing is, like you said, you do have two of those which you can pair up together for that Sunday night game and play it by ear and go with either of the or, you know, depending on what happens with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. So for sure, Mooney. And then it's, you know, Palmer, if those other guys are out, and then if not, you can just transition to Tony. All right, let's get another one with some similar options, but I, I do want to start this one off by saying, how, how are we viewing Jalen Warren this week? Najee Harris said he was, uh, Mike, Tom's, Mike Tomlin said Najee Harris was likely to be limited this week with that knee discomfort. Najee Harris was a full participant in practice Wednesday, so it doesn't seem like there's actually that much concern there. How are we handling Jalen Warren? <laughs> So this matchup could kind of go either way, depending on the health of the Bengals defense. So Mm -hmm. kind of monitor what's going on with the Bengals defense and who's if we have players that are going to play and not to kind of make your opinion on how difficult of a matchup that's going to be. But if Najee is out um, and at least that, you know, is moved up to an afternoon game. So you have a little bit of leeway. If Najee is out, then I'm okay with Jalen Warren as a low end RB2. 
If not, I think he has a safe floor. He can be a low end flex option. But if those two are together, you get a little bit concerned that the upside is kind of limited to around 10 to 12 points in full PPR. Yeah, so I have Jalen Warren right now ranked as if Najee Harris is going to play, and that puts him at RB33. He's just ahead of Daryl Henderson, A.J. Dillon, Tyler Algier. So in that range of running backs that are going to give you 8 to 12 touches, hopefully. Uh, but Jalen Warren has been really explosive in his touches this year. So if he can you know, maintain this workload, double-digit touches, I think he can work his way into being a, a pretty consistent flex. All right. Make sure you hit that like button for the for the stream. That you know, makes us look good. Let's talk about this poll that uh, producer Thomas has up. Which QB would you rather have rest of season, Lamar Jackson or Justin Fields? So I voted. <laughs> I'm kind of scared to reveal what I voted for, but uh, I well, that means vote. you voted for Fields. I voted for Fields. I did. You know, I was looking Ooh. at Lamar Jackson's finishes at quarterback, and he has not had a top seven QB finish mm -hmm. since week three uh top eight qb finish since week three i mean since week four it's been 19 15 11 22 9 10 i still think lamar jackson is really really good but obviously the injuries that his pass catchers have suffered has really hampered him uh and you know they they've been running the ball reasonably well so i think justin fields just has a little bit more upside right now i don't think he's a better passer than lamar jackson but the way that he's running uh, i think i prefer fields maybe that's a little bit mm -hmm. overreactionary uh, I mean, the bye week still being there for fields and then, you know, comparing the playoff schedules makes me lean towards the, the direction of Lamar Jackson. But I mean, at this point, you kind of wonder if fields is just going to be matchup proof because there's such a solid floor that he has, even in a very difficult matchup. And that schedule does get very difficult after his bye week. Um, but I still lean towards Lamar just purely based off that fact. But it's it's super close. Yeah, I mean, the thing that's tough with Justin Fields is like he's had a 60 plus yard touchdown each of the past two weeks. You can't rely on that every week. That's really hard to do. Even if you take that out, he's probably still a top three fantasy QB over the past two weeks. Like he still would have had, what, 110 and 180 something yards without the, the 60 plus yard touchdown. Like he's just playing absolutely out of his mind right now. And I think Lamar Jackson's really being held back by the lack of pass catchers. Frank, I think you mentioned that, but. Just without Rashad Bateman, they don't really have anybody besides Mark Andrews who can go up the field and win, you know, contested catches. That's Devin Duvernay is not that guy. He's fast. He's he's productive, but can't be a number one wide receiver. And I think, you know, without Rashad Bateman, it's really holding Lamar Jackson back. So I voted for Jackson. It's right around 50 50 right now. I think that's probably right. It's really, really close. Um and, and like Tara said, it might just come down to matchups and, and it might just come down to Justin Fields having that buy remaining. Like if you were going to make a trade, you'd ra I think I'd rather have Lamar Jackson just because of that factor. But that's really tough. Like if I if I was in first place, I might rather have Justin Fields and just weather the the bye week here. I want to I want to know if you guys are, are nerdy as big a nerd as I am to, to get this reference. Is this is this one that that clicks immediately? Mm. Nah, I didn't it think not. so. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Not all of us went and saw every Lord of the Rings movie in theaters five times uh, about, when we were in high school. How about some of us have never seen a Lord of the Rings? That's not surprising, Frank. <laughs> You've never seen any movies. <laughs> Only I've, I've seen ever. half of one. But uh, I think maybe I've seen they're so long that which is, it sounds terrible. It makes me sound like ADD and like bad, but I don't know. I've never I've I've never made it. It's long. okay. I, I've spent like a hundred hours of my life watching Lord of the Rings. That's fine guys. Uh, let's move on to some more questions. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you drop your questions in the chat. We're going to get to as many as we can. Rondell Moore or, or DJ Moore this week. Oh, I'm going with Rondell Moore. He's been so consistent. Mm -hmm. Rondell for me. Uh, Rondell for me as well. That's a clean sweep. Traded Brady for Herbert. Win or lose that trade. I, I kind of like it. I mean, if Herbert could get his weapons back, I still think he has the upside to be a top six or seven quarterback the rest of the way. So, yeah, I, I'm fine with it. Yeah, you just depended on those guys coming back, but they sound like they're on trackish. So if we, you know, hold on to that hope, then yes. Yep, agree 100%. Thin at running back still has Kamara. Should he bail on RB altogether and trade Kamara for Devontae Adams? I just pronounced Kamara's name twice in two different ways. 
have Gibson and James Robinson plus AJ Brown and Cortland Sutton. Would you make that trade? You know, in full PPR, I feel like Devontae Adams is going to be more consistent than Alvin Kamara. But Gibson and James Robinson as your starting running backs, that's pretty tough. I th I think I would do it, but that is a really close call. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. top seven or eight guys at each position. I've been higher on Kamara than, than the consensus all season. And boy, the last two weeks really, really frustrating. He had 28 targets between weeks six and eight, and then weeks nine and ten. He's got eight. I actually think Jameis Winston coming back would probably be good for this entire offense. You know, you, the whole point of having Andy Dalton ahead of Jameis Winston is so that you avoid some of those backbreaking turnovers. And Andy Dalton hasn't been doing that. So I don't know what he's supposed to be bringing to the field that uh, Jameis Winston doesn't. So I, I'd rather they make that switch, but they're not for week 11 at least. So we'll see. Uh, Sutton or Pittman, full PPR. A lot of wide receiver questions this week, as expected. So I have both of these guys ranked inside of my top 17 wide receivers this week. This feels that sounds gross. This feels <laughs> dumb. I have Corlin Sutton at wide receiver 12. Wild, wild west wide receivers this week. I, like, you know, I don't think Jerry Judy is going to play. I think Corlin Sutton could push for double digit targets, maybe see more than that. This Raiders defense is really, really bad. But really, once you get outside of the top nine wide receivers, I feel like you can rank 10 through, you know, 25 in any order. So I have Sutton a little bit higher this week, but I, I do like both. Yeah. I mean, given the matchup, I prefer Sutton, Jerry Judy being out. And we, at least we know we have a baseline of what happened. We're hoping that they can get to that baseline of what they had against the Raiders earlier in the season with Russ and Cortland Sutton. So the, I lean towards the Cortland Sutton side. Yeah. Cortland Sutton, I believe has four games with double digit targets, two of them, actually three of them. Uh, including last week, have come in the games that Jerry Judy either left early with an injury or was limited with an injury. So I think that kind of tells you uh, where things stand there. Brian asks, who do I drop for a new kicker? Dallas Goddard, Cooper Cup, Cortland Sutton, James Robinson, Rashad White, A.J. Dillon, Elijah Mitchell, or Kyle Pitts? Or Leonard Fournette? I think it's between Goddard and Dillon. I, you know, I just don't like what I've seen from Dylan this year at all. And I don't think that he has much upside, but uh, Goddard, I mean, if he returns for the fantasy playoffs can still, you know, perform like a top five tight end or so. Um, so I guess uh, I lean with Dylan. Yeah. But, Goddard and cup is so tough. Uh, yeah. Tara, how, how would you handle this? Yeah, I'd go with Dylan. I mean, you've got, obviously you have other, you know, running backs that you can go with, but you've got a solid base right there with James Robinson and Rashad White of guys that have some upside and opportunity to become a little bit more. So I'm okay with dropping Dylan, sticking with those guys. Hit the like button as cousin Ernest says, need one flex from Josh Palmer, Brandon Cooks, Isaiah Pacheco, or Jalen Warren if Najee is out. I will take the risk and go with uh, Josh Palmer. Just because even his his floor is probably going to be around the same level as the other guys. Mm -hmm. I think if Najee Harris were out and we knew that for sure, I would probably go with Warren. Yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, you can make this decision on Sunday night with Palmer and Pacheco in that same game. So, again, like we said earlier, if Mike Williams or Keenan Allen is out, I would go with Palmer. If both of those guys play, I would go with Pacheco. Yeah, the, the Chiefs running backs is a really interesting situation because – Jack McKinnon was back at practice today. He's dealing with, I think, a shoulder injury uh, and some other kind of injury. I'm not sure what it was. Uh, obviously, Clyde edwards helaire only played four snaps last week, but Andy Reid didn't say he was benched. It was just a good game plan or game flow kind of thing. So if it's back to being a three-way split, I, I kind of hate all three of those running backs, and Jarek McKinnon would probably be my favorite. But if not, if Pacheco is going to be the lead back, and he got 16 of the 17 running back carries last week. That could be a very valuable role for a you know an RB2 or 3. Um, so, yeah, I think waiting on Palmer and playing Pacheco if if Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are in is, is probably the right move. Christian Watson or Curtis Samuel in half PPR? I'm going with the upside of Watson. Same. The Gus Bus or Elijah Mitchell? I want to say, go ahead, sir. 
I, I want to say Gus. I mean, we need we need to have more information about exactly where he's at. So we got to give it. We've got Thursday's report that needs to come in. I don't think we have it yet, but um, Friday's report as well. And then we can kind of make a good judgment call in terms of whether or not he'll come back to a nice 15 carry game or not. Yeah, I feel like both uh, of these players are in similar positions right now. You know, two headed running back committees with uh, Mitchell and CMC, Gus Bus and Kenyon Drake. Yeah, I feel like Drake has earned the opportunity to, to get more touches. He's he's looked well in Gus's absence. So uh, it's a really good matchup for Gus Edwards. I think I lean with him as well. Just pay attention to practice reports, make sure he's good to go. All right. I've got a helicopter and, and a, a an ambulance and a train going on behind me. Sorry about the background noise there. It's only in New York. All right. Really could use our help. Pick two running backs, two wide receivers, and a flex. I'm sorry, Tara, for covering you up. You look like, uh, as Frank said on Sunday, you look like, was it Al? No. Wilson? Wilson from uh, <laughs> Home Improvement. Uh, yes, two running backs out of Najee Harris, Kenyon Drake, Isaiah Pacheco, DeAndre Swift. Let's go with the running backs first. Okay, let's go with Ooh. Najee if he plays and Pacheco. Two running backs. Mm. I would go, even if Najee's playing, I might lean towards Drake for a little bit of pass catching upside and Pacheco. I would go with Najee and Swift, although I mm. really Swift's usage is just incredibly frustrating. I don't know what to make of it. He was a little more involved this week, but yeah, it's uh, super frustrating there. And then two wide receivers, Alan Lazard, Rondale Moore, Paris Campbell, Deontay Johnson, DJ Moore, Kadarius Tony, and Christian Watson. Let's pick two out of that group. I would group. go with Rondale Moore and Alan Lazard. Yes, that is the safest option to go with. I think Rondell Moore for sure. I think, and I might be the last person on earth. I have Deontay Johnson ranked highest out of this group, but he's right next to Alan Lazard. They're both top 20 wide receivers for me. They'd both probably be outside of the top 25 in a normal week. Such are things in week 11. Let's get a flex out of all the rest of the ones that you didn't pick. Who are you taking? Okay. For I me, it would be Lazard. I think I would go with, if it's half PPR or non PPR, I would go with Drake as my flex. I had Harris and Pacheco as the running backs. If it's full PPR, I will take Kadarius Tony. Yeah, uh, I'm feeling pretty confident that we're not going to have Juju and yeah. probably not Hardman. So, yeah, Tony. All right. Christian Watson tonight or wait on Josh Palmer with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams? Oh, <sighs> that is tough. I mean, I would say if Mike Williams and Keenan Allen turn in another limited practice today, I feel like they're going to play. Maybe they're limited a little bit. I think I'd probably just play it safe and, and play Watson tonight just because I don't know what Palmer's role is going to be. Yeah, I think that's the best bet to go ahead and uh, get it out the way with Watson. All right. Uh, start two, Tyler Boyd, Rondale Moore, Darnell Mooney, Elijah Mitchell, or Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott. Or Keenan Allen or Jerry Judy if they're healthy. Two wide receivers and a flex. I would take Rondell Moore, uh, Darnell Mooney, and Tyler Boyd. Yeah, I would prefer to go with those. All right. Uh, just to everyone in the chat, please don't put your questions in multiple times. I understand you want your get your questions answered. But one, we're not going to get to everything. I'm sorry. That's just the facts of the matter. It's moving really quickly, moving faster than we can speak. And also just when you when you spam the chat, it makes everyone's experience worse and makes me want to not pick your questions out of spite. So that's that's a little motivation to not do it. Lost Cup, I have Burrow and Tua. Who would you try to trade and pick up at wide receiver? And who do you think is a realistic wide receiver option for one of the quarterbacks? So first, would you trade Burrow or Tua? I guess you kind of have to go with Tua since you don't have him this week. Yeah, that's what I was going to mm. say. Yeah. Um, which is fine. You know, I think if Jamar Chase comes back, Burrow can still be like a top 10, top eight quarterback rest of season. Uh, plus, I mean, hey, you're selling Tua at the top of his value right now. So I, I don't think that that's a bad idea. As for what you could get in PPR, uh, man, it's hard. In a one quarterback league, you know, every, I don't think people are willing to give up much for that. Like maybe a high end wide receiver, too. For a Tua type, would you give up Tua for Debo Samuel? No, 
I would want more than Debo hey. Samuel. Amari Cooper. No, I would want more than Amari Cooper. I would do oh. Amari Cooper. I'm okay uh, with that. Chris Olave. <laughs> I guess I want a wide receiver one then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what I'm learning here. I'm on St. Brown, <laughs> T Higgins. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> ideally, that's what it is. You know, like it's T Higgins, it's a modern St. Brown. I don't know how realistic that is. In a I mean, look, if you've got two must start caliber quarterbacks, you're in a position of strength right now because there are not that many of them. I would say there are only like, I mean, is Kyler Murray someone you feel super confident starting right now? Or are there, there is like, six or seven good fantasy quarterbacks and then everyone else is like 18 to 20 points most weeks it, it's it's a really tough time for the position would you do yeah. it for terry mclaurin right now the way he's playing <sighs> who will for terry mclaurin i i think i want more than that but i'm i tend to be lower on terry mclaurin than most people mm. i have terry McLaurin see, that's why go ahead sir no, and see, I said, and see, that's why I was okay with doing a Mari Cooper, just because I think the upside is coming for him. So I'm okay with that one, even though he's been so ridiculously inconsistent. Um, it's a shame that you have two on a bye week, because I feel yeah. like Joe Burrow is the one that has the higher perception trade value, and two is the one that I would probably rather keep in terms of the stability and consistency and weapons moving forward. But yeah, but I'm okay. I would do, I would do... Amari Cooper, I would do Terry McLaurin. I would not. Chris Olave is risky because I don't have a lot of faith that Jameis Winston is coming back, unfortunately. I think they're being a little uh, a little bit evasive about that back injury. All right. right. Uh, Amari Cooper's game log real quick, Chris, just to see how many road games he has left. This game, Yeah, the home road splits are nuts. Game. It's like 90, to 90 <laughs> yards per game to 30. Yeah. It's wild. I looked this up the other day. In home games this season, he's the wide receiver five in PPR. In road games, he's wide receiver 72. And I think he had similar splits with the Cowboys too, which is weird because yeah. like, okay, maybe it makes sense in Dallas because he plays indoors at home. Cleveland, not exactly known for having the best home weather, but for some reason, uh, maybe he just really like, is he sponsored by Sleepmatic? Like, uh... <laughs> he, he should be. I, I think I think you might be onto something. I think that's a real thing. Like he just cannot sleep on the road and it affects him. Shout out to the Swole cast. I was watching it yesterday. Davis Maddock brought up a good stat. In home games in Amari Cooper's career, 16 PPR points. In road games, 11. That's so that's, weird because he's played for three different teams. That's a big sample, dude. Like, yeah, this is a real thing. Yeah, I sleep better at hotels. Maybe I'm, I'm the weird <laughs> one. Uh, is J.K. Dobbins worth picking up? He is... Um, I, I saw something this week. He's not practicing yet, but he's making progress. Uh, but he also said... You know, I'm hoping to be healthy for the playoffs was the the reason why he had the the surgery. So, like, I don't know if that meant he's aiming for the playoffs or, you know, what. But is he worth a roster spot right now? Unless it's just stashing on the IR, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think I can use an actual just straight-up bench spot for him. All right. Rank these three, Daniel Jones, Marcus Mariota, or Dak Prescott this week. Oh, um... That is, mm, hold on. I'm confused on Dak right now. Give me one second. I have Dak, Daniel Jones, Mariota. Yeah, I have Dak ranked yeah. pretty high. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with him. Dak, think, Daniel Jones, Mariota for me. Yep. That's a massive game too for just NFC seating and standings and should be a shootout Vikings and Cowboys. So. Would you trade Deontay Johnson for Isaiah Pacheco if you need a running back in PPR? Uh, I think it's it's probably fair, but Pacheco just does not catch passes. They do no. not throw the ball to him at all. He barely runs routes, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I'd i probably try and get somebody a little bit better than Pacheco. Yeah. Need three, Gabe Davis, Christian Watson, Kadarius Toney, Garrett Wilson, Josh Palmer. Also have Stefan Diggs, and the weather is looking pretty bad. So that's that's one thing we should mention, that Buffalo game. Uh, I think it's Buffalo-Cleveland on Sunday. There is talk of that game being moved. Is, did I get that right, Buffalo-Cleveland? That is correct. Yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's talk of that game being moved to Detroit with uh, estimates of up to six feet of snow in Buffalo, which is... That's a that's an amount of snow that I actually can't comprehend. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if the game gets moved, I don't think you have any concerns. 
you know, Detroit's an indoor facility. I don't think there'd be any concerns there, but you know, obviously if they're playing through snow, that, that does make things a little interesting. How, how do you, how are you feeling about Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis right now? We'll start with Tara. If they are, if they are playing in the snow, that is snowmageddon. Um, I would feel very uncomfortable with Gabe Davis. You have to start Stefan Diggs. I mean, I would, start get Stefan Diggs in pretty much any situation because at the very least you need him as a flex option, but I would stay away from Gabe Davis. So I was looking up the weather just before and Friday and Saturday is when they're supposed to get the most snow. And then Sunday, 22 mile per hour winds. It's not supposed to snow on Sunday, but obviously if it's snow six feet, like there's going to be <laughs> snow around, like I'm sure yeah. they could do a good job of like whatever, cleaning up the field. But Maybe for the sake of the fans and stuff, they still move the game, something like that. So not supposed to actually snow on Sunday, but snow Friday, Saturday, and a lot of it. So just based on that much win, too, like Gabe Davis is a deep threat. He's probably more of a low-end wide receiver, two, high-end wide receiver, three. I don't know that he's a must-start. Uh, look, Stephon Diggs, you, you have to play him. Like, if you have him, you, you have to start him, regardless of the weather. So let's just hope they they move it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they, Buffalo can spend five days in, in Detroit. I'm sure it's not that bad because they play on uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. In third, Which kind in of Detroit. makes you think that they're leaning towards doing it because it's very convenient. So, yeah. Yeah. And that would get them inside of the dome, too. Let's go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, um, out of this three, though, this group, pick three Gabe Davis, Christian Watson, Kadarius Tony, Garrett Wilson, Josh Palmer. You're starting dig. So, I guess pick two. I'm not sure. Maybe pick. Let's just pick three in, in just in case. I would go with uh, Garrett Wilson. Man, I know I just talked down Gabe Davis, but he's my next <laughs> highest ranked wide receiver. Uh, and then the same thing that we said for a lot of people today. See what happens with the Chargers. If one of Allen or Williams is out, play Palmer. If those guys are playing, then I would go with Kadarius Tony. I lean, so I get a little bit nervous about the matchup for Garrett Wilson. Gabe, uh, Corey Davis being out obviously helps a ton, but just get a little bit concerned that maybe they will, you know, the Patriots lock him down and focus in on him. Um, so, you know, weather pending, I do want to pivot away from Gabe Davis. So I would go with Christian Watson and Kadarius Tony for sure. And then Josh Palmer and that, you know, kind of unfortunately locks you in with Palmer, but I just get a little bit concerned about Garrett Wilson this week. All right. Need a wide receiver after losing Cooper Cup to injury. T. Higgins has left him as as my number one wide receiver. Kyler is the quarterback. Would you trade Travis Kelsey and Jeff Wilson for Joe Burrow and C.D. Lamb? I don't think that you need. I don't think you need the quarterback upgrade. I think that's that's. Yeah, yeah, I, I think like if you need a wide receiver. Go get another wide receiver rather than another quarterback. You've got a. I think Kyler and Joe Burrow is probably going to be pretty similar the rest of the season. Yeah, I think that's fair. Like, if you want to offer up Kelsey for Lamb, I probably would try and ask for another piece in there because obviously having the best tight end in fantasy is very, very valuable. So, Kelsey for Lamb and a flex running back or a wide receiver three, whatever you might need, or I guess you'll need a tight end in return, something like that. Um, I think that's something you could look into if you really need wide receiver help. Yeah, I get kind of, kind of be interesting though. Uh, what other tight end you would have with it, us being so short on available tight ends if you trade away Kelsey? So I may get a little bit concerned with that. But but I agree. I think you're going to be fine. Even if Kyler doesn't play this week, there are still some interesting available streaming options that you can go with. So I would I would stick it out and just trade for another wide receiver solo. Would you trade Deontay Foreman and Donovan Peoples Jones for DK Metcalf? Yeah, I like yeah, that. Game. Making trades at this time of the year is always so tough, though, because if you're like five and five trading for DK Metcalf, might be a tough spot to be in, you know, because you, you might need the starter this week. But assuming that's not an issue, I, I think that's a fine trade. Uh, Najee Harris or Cordero Patterson? Tara? Cordero Patterson. Frank? Same. Yep. I Yeah, I... Th- Obviously, there's some concern that he only had, what, five carries in the most recent game, but I think that was, it was his second game back off IR. The timing was, it was like uh, Gus Edwards' second game back coming off of the the knee injury being on a Thursday night. It was just like, I don't know what to expect in that situation with only four days off. So hopefully he should be fine, but I do think it could be a situation with Carter Patterson where like 
if he has 18 carries in one game, maybe you might want to be worried that he'll only get, you know, eight the next game because they've talked so much about needing to keep him fresh. And, and frankly, he just plays such a physical style. It's so weird that this guy who's like known as a kick returner and, and converted wide receiver is like, he runs like Derrick Henry. Like he's, he's, he invites contact. It's, it's fascinating. Um, we already talked about the Bills Browns. Let's, uh, let's make sure you hit the like button. Uh, on the Ask FFT stream on the Fantasy Football Today YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. I think you technically have to be subscribed if you're asking questions, but if you're not asking questions, make sure you subscribe so you can. Uh, let's see. Watson or Campbell in flex? Who am I? Paris Campbell. Christian Watson or Paris mm. Campbell this week? Man, this feels so, like your classic uh, <laughs> upside versus safety and floor, right? Like yep. Campbell's getting so many targets with Matt Ryan. 32 in his last three games with Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. But I think I would chase the dragon and go for the upside with Christian Watson. Yeah, I agree. I think they're. I think Green Bay is going to integrate him more um, into this offense, and I think this is going to continue to move forward. Three touchdowns is a little bit unrealistic, but while I trust now, granted, I like Paris Campbell. I trust the statistics, although we do have to think about the fact that this is, again, a much more difficult matchup. And will we see the same Matt Ryan that we saw last week against a, you know, terrible Las Vegas defense? So... <laughs> Watson is definitely the higher upside play. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Trying to get some more questions. Should I do any of these trades? Diggs and Michael Carter and Greg Dulcich for Derrick Henry, Christian Watson, and Dalton Schultz. Would you do that trade? Uh, I guess Diggs and Henry. It's close to a wash. I think I'd rather yeah. have Diggs. I think I would rather have Diggs as well. So then yeah. you're looking at Carter and Dulcich for Watson. Watson and Schultz. Which is a, that's an upgrade for me. Yeah. Yeah. You I know, it's a really tr- close trade. If it's half PPR or non, I probably would do it. If it's full PPR, I don't think I would sacrifice Diggs for Derrick Henry. It's dependent on what you need. If you really need a running back, I would make that trade. If not, then stick with Diggs. Would you trade Diggs and ETN for Jamar Chase and Saquon Barkley? Wow. I I don't think there's any way I can do it with with this the uncertainty around Chase. Like he was still on crutches this week. I know there's been talk that yeah. they expect him or hope yeah. he can be back for week 12, but I just there's no guarantee that Jamar Chase is going to be the same guy coming back for this injury, at least not this season. Yeah, it's, it's hip injuries can be really tough. Yeah, I get a little bit concerned about that as well. And I wouldn't expect, like, I know ETN is coming off of a, a, a obviously disappointing game, but I think he'll still get to back to a similar upside that he had before. Um. All right, let's, uh, let's get some new questions in here. Are we starting James Conner versus San Francisco? Where do we have him ranked? I think I have him 15th. At running back, it's his role right now is just so valuable. Even ninety six percent of the snaps last mm-hmm. week. Even if he's inefficient, it's you know twenty four touches last week, three receptions, uh, the target share since returning twelve percent. I think he had eight red zone opportunities last week. I, even in a tough matchup, th- this role is massive. So, yeah, I, I have him RB fifteen. He's just ahead of Montgomery, Jamal Williams, Devin Singletary, uh, Commanders running back. So. If Ezekiel Elliott plays, would you start him over both cow- Cowboys running backs? Yes. Yeah, I would. What about Connor versus David Montgomery with no Khalil Herbert out? I have them back to back, but Connor is one spot higher. Uh, I don't. I didn't see if Montgomery practiced today. I know he missed practice yesterday with some kind of personal issue. Yeah. So let's pay attention to that. But I, I would still use Connor. I am the opposite. I would go Montgomery over. I would have Montgomery one over Connor. I have Montgomery one spot ahead of James Conner. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown, Michael Pittman, Alan Lazard, Kadarius Tony, PPR start two. It's Amon and I have Lazard and Pittman really close. I think I have Lazard a few spots higher, though. It yeah. is Amon and Lazard for me. I have Pittman ahead of Lazard, but I totally get it. The, the concerns about... Uh, Matt Ryan and just the quality of the Colts offense against that Eagles pass uh, pass defense is, is a little concerning. The Eagles, by the way, added uh, Indomitian Sue while we were talking. So 
They're uh, continuing to go for it with with some big names. They added Linville Johnson, Linville Joseph uh, yesterday as well. So clearly trying to beef up the interior of that line. Here's a tough one. And this is one where it's like, oh, you're you're in a good spot either way. But I, I hate these situations. I hate when you have to bench a good player. Who would you bench, C.D. Lamb or Ramondre Stevenson? I love Ramondre, but I bench him. Yeah, I agree. I, I would use C.D. Lamb. Finally got that ceiling game out of him last week. We know what the upside is. Playing inside of a dome, massive game this week, big total, shootout potential. I would go with C.D. Lamb. Uh. Jay Will, is it Jeff Wilson? Because he's not playing this week if it is. Is there someone else I, I should be thinking of? Mm. Jamal, Jamal Williams. Williams. There you go. Jamal Williams, Deontay right. Foreman, or Alvin Kamara this week. PPR and half point per rush attempt, which definitely helps Jamal Williams. Sure does. I would I would still go with Kamara. Same. I'm okay with going with Jamal Williams. Uh, he did miss practice yesterday with an illness, but it's an illness, so hopefully he'll be good to go this week, but that's just something to, to keep an eye on. Grade the trade. Give up Josh Allen for Justin Fields. Is that – that's it? That's just that trade? Or is it – okay, Allen, Barkley, and Gabe Davis for Fields, Henry, and Kittle. Is that right? I think it's three separate. Well, we can't grade three different trades. It's asking too much, Alexander. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Allen, Barkley, and Gabe Davis for Fields, Henry, and I think that's a downgrade all, all across the board, I think. I don't like it. Uh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. And I guess if you really need the tight end, but even then, it's... Yeah, Kittle's, Kittle's had like two good games so far. That's That was my concern. with The, 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 the concerns that I had for the 49ers offense have really been... Uh, confirmed. It's just, it's a math problem. They don't throw the ball enough, and it's like if Brandon Ayuk's going to be a big part of this offense, like he has been, it just makes it really hard for Debo Samuel and George Kittle to live up to expectations. They have too much talent, Chris. Like, how is that a <laughs> yeah. real thing? Yeah. They have Kittle. But, that, but that's the thing about football, right? Is it's it's a zero sum game. It's you know Frank and I talk about mm-hmm. fantasy baseball a lot. In fantasy baseball, it's like a player gets a good teammate. That's great because that means more opportunities. He's going to have someone else to drive him in. In football, every touch that Christian McCaffrey gets is by definition a touch that Debo Samuel cannot get and a, a touch that George Kittle can't get. It's it's a really hard situation, especially when it's a, a 49ers team that wants to run the ball a ton, that doesn't like play at a super fast pace. It'd be one thing if this was Arizona who had this because they play at a super fast pace and they don't really run the ball as much. But this is it's a bad combination of too much talent and not a great situation for fantasy. Obviously, this is a... Amazing situation if you're Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> uh, last week to make a trade, guy in this league offered AJ Brown and, or Mike Evans plus Aaron Jones for Jamar Chase. So you have Jamar Chase. Would you take AJ Brown or Mike Evans and Aaron Jones for him? I, I think you have to. Yeah, I'll yep. do that for sure. AJ Brown or Mike Evans? I was going to pull up some strength of schedule stuff real quick just to see. Who yeah. has the better schedule between the two? Obviously, Evans is on bye this week. So if you're desperate, AJ Brown Boston, has a better matchup this week. <laughs> that is that is factual. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, Philly. Uh, it looks like they're both kind of in a similar spot. They're like middle of the yeah. pack, rest of the way. Who would I prefer, AJ Brown or Mike Evans? Uh, I'm going AJ Brown. Yeah. yeah, with Goddard being out, I think the upside gets a little bit higher for him. Yeah, let's do that. All right, great. Another trade, C.D. Lamb and, assuming Jeff Wilson, right, for Jonathan Taylor, half PBR. I guess that could be Garrett Wilson, too. But... Could be Garrett Wilson. <laughs> Probably similar value either way, right? Uh, oh, yeah, so I guess it's he be has Jeff Garrett Wilson, Wilson yeah. so it has Jeff to be Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Okay. Uh, Lamb and Jeff Wilson for JT. I kind of feel like C.D. Lamb for JT is a fair trade straight up. Yeah, that's what I feel. But I'm very high on Jeff Wilson, so maybe I'm a little bit biased on that because I think he kind of – his production sticks moving forward. Mm. I, I mean, look, if you're loaded at running back – like if you have a lot of running back depth but you're looking to get an elite option in Jonathan Taylor, I think it's fine. I think it's, you know, it's like a C or C- minus for the trade. Um, but, yeah, I personally, I think Lamb for for JT straight up is, is fair a fair deal. 
All right. Uh, thanks, for everyone, for joining us. Make sure you hit the like button. We're at 112 likes. I'm not going to answer another question until we get to 120. That's really not uh, setting the bar very high, but, you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not Adam. I don't like to, you know, put the, but put the pressure on people. Uh, I'm actually just going to answer questions because I don't feel like filling in uh, dead air. We need two more likes. We'll just call it thoughts on Komet moving forward. He did miss practice on Wednesday with a thigh injury. I have not seen anything on Thursday. So let me do some quick typing, but assuming he's healthy, how are we feeling about Cole Komet? 133 likes. Look at that. <laughs> Good job, Chris. Uh, I, I, pers uh, I personally feel like uh, Cole Komet is just behind, I guess you want to call that trustworthy group of, you know, Kelsey, Andrews, Hawkinson, D uh, Dalton Schultz. You know, he's in that next group of, you know, six through 10 with like Dulcich and Austin Moreau and Pat Fryermuth. I, you know, I think he needs a touchdown. The, the targets have been there. He's scoring. So I, I think he's probably locked in rest of season as like a low end starter, but you know, it's tight end. So it's not really saying much. Yeah. Given the state of tight end right now, I think a low end tight end one is, is reasonable. It, it again, you know, comes down to how much do you believe in Justin Fields? If you believe that Justin Fields production is going to stick, if his pass volume is going to stick, if his, um, you know, touchdown rate is going to stick through the air, then yeah. Uh, the favoritism that he's shown there as he's been moving forward and becoming more efficient with his passes has just leaned so heavy to commit. You have to put him as a tight end one option. It's just how much do we believe that this is sticking with Justin Fields? I will say if you need a tight end and you're a little worried about Cole Komet's availability this week or you lost Dallas Goddard, go see if Trey McBride is available. Second round pick, 55th overall, I think this year, played almost 100% of the snaps after Zach Ertz's injury or it's uh, done for the season. So an opportunity for Trey McBride there in that Arizona offense moving forward. Allen Robinson or any Rams wide receiver over any of these DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin or Garrett Wilson. We're not, we're not that desperate, right? No, no. I, I have Terry McLaurin as a top 10 wide receiver this week. So <laughs> I am, I'm starting him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, grade the trade Chris Godwin for Lamar Jackson. Kind of a tough one. I th I think it's probably fair, right? Like what we were talking about before, trying to trade a quarterback for you know, a high-end wide receiver. If you have the wide receiver depth, I, I, I think it's probably fair. See? Godwin for yeah. Lamar. If we believe that Lamar is going to bounce back, that separation between the top five quarterbacks and everyone else is so so severe that I think this is a fine trade. All right. Uh, DeAndre Swift, George Pickens, or Darius Slayton in PPR this week? Uh, Wando Robinson has not practiced this, or he left practice yesterday with a hamstring injury, did not practice today. Could be a situation where Darius Slayton's the number one wide receiver again. I would still go with Swift, though. I like Slayton, man. I like what I've seen. Showed a lot of burst last week. Uh, I think he's going to be the top target in the offense. Could some sneaky shootout potential in this game too. I would take Slayton personally. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, especially if Wandell doesn't play, that really limits the target share going directly to even if it's even if it's only, you know, 17, 20 passes from Daniel Jones, that's still going to produce enough volume for Darius Slayton if he's that main guy. And it's a fantastic matchup against Detroit. So I like it. Could get a touchdown in this game. All right. Terry is in tight end hell. Would you start Tanyan or Conklin this week? I have them ranked back to back 16 and 17. So uh, I don't love either, but Conklin is the one that is just ahead. He had a really big game against the Patriots the yep. last time they faced, which was like two or three weeks ago. So uh, I guess I would hold on to that. I'm going with the safe option of Tanyan, um, and given the matchup a little bit as well, I just I, what happened with Conklin last last week was weird. <laughs> it made me super uncomfortable. So I'll lean towards uh, Tanyan being a little bit safer of an option. All right, um, sit one: Damian Pierce, Brian Robinson, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Cortland Sutton, or Chris Olave. Who are we sitting out of this group? Full PPR. I'm going to sit Brian Robinson. I know he had the 26 carries or whatever, but 
does not catch passes and those other players catch a lot of passes. So I, I would say Brian Robinson. Yeah. Now granted, this is a great matchup for Brian Robinson. So I think we could see a repeat, but I would make on the other options over him. All right. Uh, let's see. Lamb and, oh, we already did this one. Uh, Fields or Josh Allen this week. I mean, if you have to make the decision right now, yeah, it's actually pretty, it's tough. Like, Allen, I I mean, I can't even say he has more upside with the way Fields has played the last couple of weeks. Obviously, he's a better player, but given the concerns about the weather, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, that, that I couldn't. Crazy. I'm not I'm not brave enough to make a Justin Fields yeah. over Josh Allen call. Hey, we did it last week, right, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> when we didn't know uh, if Josh Allen that's was true. Sure, but yeah, I mean... Josh Allen still has as much upside as anybody. Yeah, you know, even with what we've seen from Justin Fields the past two weeks, like, you know, you don't want to sit Josh Allen and he goes out and has one of these, you know, three touchdown, 75 rushing yard type games, yeah. and you're just, you know, left kicking yourself. So I would still start Josh Allen. I don't know if you saw this stat though, Chris. Justin Fields has the most rushing yards by a quarterback ever over a five game span in NFL history. Five hundred and sixty eight rushing yards. Wow. Wow, that's uh, that's mm. me in my my career in Madden that I'm currently playing. That, that's the kind of production <laughs> I'm getting. Uh, start to sit one: Cordero Patterson, Deontay Foreman, Gus Edwards. Who are we sitting? Gus. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the full PPR aspect lends itself to that as well. Gus just does not catch passes either. All right, grade the trade cup. And Singletary. So giving up Cup and Singletary before Cup. Okay, before Cup's injury for Kamara and Godwin. I mean, you, you won that trade because Cooper Cup got hurt. Yeah. Unless you were the one who cried Co- Cooper Cup, in which case I feel really bad for you. Um, Trade the trade beforehand. I, I, I probably, uh, maybe a slight win, like a C plus, something like that. Would you yeah. trade Justin Fields and Greg Dulcich for Jalen Hurts right now? <laughs> Man, other know, QB is Kyler Murray other tight end is Kyle Pitts oh uh, gosh I so I don't think Dulcich <laughs> is an upgrade over Pitts so I, I don't think you're really losing much there I think they're going to be very similar players moving forward it's actually really frustrating that Kyle Pitts is actually getting the targets now he's got 24 over his past three games and just Marcus Mariota has not been able to hit him uh I felt like I was losing my mind on Thursday watching Marcus Mariota overthrow Kyle Pitts and then hit Olamide Zacchaeus in stride down the field. <laughs> uh, would you make this trade? Is Hertz one? Is Hertz an upgrade over Justin Fields? I don't know that this is that dissimilar than the Lamar Jackson question earlier. Like Fields has been, I mean, Hertz has been better than Lamar. There's no doubt about that. It, it kind of feels like a lateral move right now, which is just so crazy to say for Fields and Hurts. I think there's another trade here that you can make, right? The fact that you have Fields and Kyler Murray, mm-hmm. I, you know, maybe try and trade one of those guys for like a running back or a wide receiver. Yeah. I, I think that is more valuable than just trying to slightly upgrade your quarterback or even make a lateral move. It's I, I see something else, like a better trade somewhere in here than than what you're trying to do. Yeah, I think if I was looking at the, I mean, when you put Kyler Murray and Justin Fields side by side, if you can get somebody to take Kyler Murray and you stick it out with Justin Fields, I would prefer to do that. Um, Because as much as we talk about the bad schedule ahead for Justin Fields, the schedule ahead for Kyler Murray is just as concerning. And he is more concerning in terms of his actual production and stability. Even with Marquise Brown coming back, you just get a little bit more concerned that he doesn't have that rushing upside to the level that Justin Fields has. So I would prefer to trade Kyler Murray and stick with Justin Fields. And both are on a bye moving forward, correct? Yeah, Kyler, I think, is they have week 14. Week 13. 13. Yeah. Um, we haven't talked about the Call of Duty thing yet, Chris. Can you... Uh... <laughs> Can you fill us in on the Kyler so, Murray? Uh, they, they've been having some. They've been having some server issues on Warzone 2.0. Oh. So you know that might help him this week at least. So uh, that's why he's back at practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gotcha. makes sense. I mean, look, I, I I make my jokes, but I'm allowed to make my jokes because I'm also the guy who's put in like 500 hours in in Call of Duty. Uh, but you know, I, I don't I don't like when people who don't play the game make the jokes. All right, that's, that's my culture. All right, have some I, respect. 
you know I play video games, Chris. Just not Call of Duty. So. <laughs> no, you've got you've got you've got the the Pokemon uh, uh, Pokemon launch coming out. Tomorrow's a big day. All right. Uh, yeah, I've got family coming in for Thanksgiving. The the week that the new Pokemon and Warzone games coming out, it's really tough for me. It's unfair. <laughs> we should have scheduled this better. Postpone Thanksgiving. I have Mark Andrews and Dalton Schultz. Higby is on waivers. Pick up Higby. I, I don't think so. Right. You're fine. No, no. Um, yeah, I like those other two more. Uh, Keenan Allen, Adam Thielen, or Darnell Mooney. Who would you start? And this might have many. to make that call before we we know before inactives at least for the third Sunday night game around. This might be crazy. Even if Keenan Allen plays, I'm, I'm starting Darnell Mooney. Same. I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's crazy. Yeah, I just think you know some people will see the name value Tara, and they'll see you know Keenan Allen in a big game against the Chiefs, right? Like. There is upside there. There's no doubt about it. But I also think there's a lot of upside with Mooney at Atlanta inside the dome. Yeah. Big total in that game, too. Like, we can mm-hmm. see that game shoot out as well. So I, I do like Mooney a lot. Impact on Kamara if Jameis Winston becomes the starting QB. So you would think before, you know, we were kind of happy, like, okay, Andy Dalton throws more passes short. It'll benefit Kamara. But the offense is just absolutely atrocious with him. So I just. Jameis Winston coming back, it's going to help out just because everything is going to overall get better, open up more. And so I, I prefer Jameis Winston for Kamara. I think there's a little push and pull here where you would feel better about the offense and hopefully their ability to get down the field and score points. But I do think the targets and the target share overall would come down a little bit for Kamara. So it's probably a net neutral, which you know kind of just leaves Kamara as a low-end RB1, which, which is fine. So... No, some good, but also I think some bad. I don't know that we'll see the same target share. Thielen or Kadarius Tony? I would go with Tony. Yeah, um, it's Tony for sure with me. Grade the trade. Give up Foster Moreau and Cortland Sutton for Amari Cooper. I like it. It's. I think it's a slight win, like a B minus. I like it. I mean, this is Jerry Judy's ankle injury, is it's day to day. So you might, you know, obviously we prefer the Sutton side and like the upside for him this week, given the matchup and everything, but a healthy Jerry Judy and not so perfect matchups for Russ. I don't like, I, I would prefer to just, you know, Hey, okay, we'll sit Amari Cooper on those <laughs> not at home days and um, go out with the big bang boom games for him when he's at home. Yeah, and then the, obviously there's the the looming Deshaun Watson of it all, where we mm-hmm. we assume he brings more upside to this passing game, but obviously he hasn't played in two years, so we we really don't know what to expect from him. You know, uh, I completely forgot about that, Chris. So yeah, I th- you know, if you could trade for Amari Cooper or or even Donovan Peoples Jones for like really cheap right now, probably something. Yeah, I, I think Donovan Peoples Jones could have like a, a Will Fuller, like, but you know, hopefully not hurt all the time kind <laughs> of impact. I mean, he, that's kind of what he's been lately, but. I think he's a really skilled player. Um, he's been so, so consistent. I, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, trade Montgomery for Antonio Gibson and Tyler Lockett. I think I'd trade Montgomery for Tyler Lockett. So I like getting a low-end RB2 as well. Yeah. Yeah. Go with it. Uh, have Cousins and Fields and can pick up Brady off waivers. Wide receivers are Godwin, Higgins, Olave, and Rondell Moore. Should he trade Justin Fields for a wide receiver? It doesn't seem necessary, um, but I think I would be okay with Cousins and Brady just kind of playing the matchups. Fields has infinitely more upside than those guys right now, but as we've continued to say, he still has a bye week. He has a tough schedule the rest of the way. So, yeah, look, if you could turn Fields into a top five or six wide receiver, like one of the elite names, then, yeah, I think it's something you have to do. Yeah, it's got to be a top five player. Otherwise, you're just giving up so much upside to somebody else that you so just we're can't talking get with Cousins and Brady. So we're talking uh, Justin Jefferson, Stefan Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins, CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, those to AJ Brown. Would you do it for AJ Brown? I don't think so. Mm. But that is close. That, like, that's close to the cutoff, basically. Yeah. What about Amon Ra? think i think i wouldn't do it yeah I, I think the only other name we haven't mentioned is Devonte adams that i, I would sure mm. yeah yeah so it has to be like one of those six that, that's what you're looking for for fields 
All right. Play Watson tonight or wait for Keenan Allen late Sunday. No pivot available. Watson. I think you got to, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just think back to when Keenan Allen came back, (laughs) that first game back. It was not, no, no good. Yeah. That was. I might be making this up, Tara, but are, you're a Packers fan, right? I am. Yes. Yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's go Packers. Yes. <laughs> I, already, I already bet Green Bay minus three, so let's go. <laughs> nice. That's going to do it for the Thursday afternoon Ask FFT stream. Thanks so much for Tara. Thanks for Frank. Thanks for Thomas in the background, putting up polls and handling stuff like that. And I'm Chris Towers. We'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe to Fantasy Football today. And yeah, we'll be back on Sunday afternoon answer Sunday morning. I guess Adam would say that's afternoon because he's got his weird afternoon thing, but it's morning. It starts at 1130. <laughs> that is the morning. It's not until the afternoon, although we do run until the afternoon. All right, we'll see you then.